The next sensors I'm going to go over are ultrasonic sensors. They're pretty similar conceptually to active IR sensors in that they have a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter sends out ultrasonic waves and the, and the receiver detects them. So if an object gets in the way of the ultrasonic sensor, the ultrasonic waves that are, uh, are transmitted are reflected off a hand and detected by the receiver. Now the way the ultrasonic sensors work with the Arduino is that they measure the amount of time it takes to receive that ultrasonic pulse. So this is a way to uh, determine how far away the object is. If the object is farther away, then it will take longer for the reflected ultrasonic waves to be received. The big advantage of ultrasonic sensors is that they have longer detector uh, uh, range. That is that the object, it will be able to detect an object up to something like 500 centimeters away. Um, whereas uh, normal IR sensor is going to be much less than that. It's, all, it's around maybe 20 centimeters or so. There are long distance IR sensors as well. And I have a link for, uh, for one in the, in the description. All right, now I'm going to hook these, one of these ultrasonic sensors up and we'll see how well it works. I set up an ultrasonic sensor with an Arduino Uno. Here's the schematic again. The trigger pin is connected to pin number seven and the echo pin is connected to pin number six. And I'm gonna go over two program, two pieces of code for reading in these ultrasonic sensors. The first one is from, I copied from How To Mechatronics. Uh, here's a link. It, a link will also be in the description of this video. At the top of the, of the code there the trigger and echo pins are declared right here. There's a variable for the duration. Uh, this variable records the amount of time it takes for the ultrasonic wave that's emitted to be returned to, to the sensor. So if an object is farther away, it will take longer for that ultrasonic wave to be reflected off the object back down to the sensor. Using this information and the speed of the ultrasonic wave, you can determine the distance the object is away, and that's stored in this variable distance. In the setup function, the trigger pin and the echo pin are declared as outputs and inputs respectively, and this line sets up the serial monitor. In the loop function, there's a delay just so that we're not reading out a bunch of these measurements too quickly, and I am also keeping track of the amount of time that occurs between each measurement made with the ultrasonic sensor. So I have a start time and I later compare it or measure, subtract this start time uh, to the amount of time it took for the sensor to read, which is this line of code down here. And to read the ultrasonic sensor, an ultrasonic pulse is sent out by first setting the trigger pin low then setting it high for some amount of time. In this case, it's 10 microseconds, and then setting the trigger pin low again. Then the duration is calculated here by using this pulse in function. And then from this duration, you can calculate the distance the object is away. Again, longer amounts of time for objects, objects that are farther away. And for a more thorough explanation, check out the link in the description. And then the distance is displayed right here using the print ln command. So let's turn on the serial monitor right here. And right now there's nothing that's in front of the ultrasonic sensor except for the ceiling in this room. So what you're seeing is a measurement of, of, of distance between the ultrasonic sensor and the ceiling, which is about 160 centimeters right here. And the time right here is the amount of time in milliseconds that it takes for the sensor to make this measurement. Now, if I move my hand in front of the ultrasonic sensor right here, you'll see the distance change to about 12 or 13 centimeters, roughly. 
And also you realize that the time is changing. Now the time between measurements is about one millisecond. You'll also notice, okay, so right now I'm starting to move my hand away and you see that the distance is changing. But you'll also notice that these measurements are, are very noisy. And that's my big critique for these ultrasonic sensors. It makes them difficult to use in, if you're trying to get an accurate measurement of distance. And also, the amount of time changes depending on how far away the, the object is from the sensor. So this will affect the runtime of your loop function. So if you've got something else that's being updated in the loop function, then there's going to be some change in, in, uh, in between uh, updates of that device. For example, if you're blinking an LED at some rate, uh, in in your loop, it will change depending on what's in front of your ultrasonic sensor, and that may not be what you want in your in your project in your device. So I ran into this issue with the the laser sheet generator that I created a few months ago, and when somebody's hands in front of the the sensor, the LEDs blink at a different rate, and it it actually adds this cool effect with the light sheet, but it's not what I intended. Uh, also, another issue here is if the if no objects in the range of, of the detector, uh, then the lag times get really bad. So I'm just going to try to tilt the sensor right here and to, to some object that's far away. Let's see if I can get it lined up right. Um, there we go. So right now it's not it's not able to detect any object in its path or uh, the ultrasonic wave is reflecting in a weird way and you're getting these very long lag times about 180 milliseconds before I guess there's some timeout that's going on in the pulse in function I'm not exactly sure um, but this is going to just sh slow down your code and if you're using a bunch of these ultrasonic sensors, if one of if this is happening with just one of them, your update rate is going to get all all messed up, and your and your device is going to slow down. Okay, so I just went over this this code, and now I'm going to go over another way to read in these ultrasonic sensors using the new ping library right here. I have a link for this library in the description of the video. And this library was designed because other people have been frustrated by the issues that I pointed out with these ultrasonic sensors. I'm going to go over, I, I, copied, I also copied this code uh, from the Arduino website. And the trigger pin and the echo pin are defined in a similar way. And also, a max distance is defined, so this uh, helps deal with that timing issue that uh, when there's no object within the range of the ultrasonic sensor, instead of taking really long amount of time to realize that there's no ultrasonic wave coming back, uh, there's some time out. Um, and if the distance is beyond this, then you won't have crazy lag times. This line of code uh, sets up a single ultrasonic sensor. And another nice thing about this new ping library is that it's it's very easy to set up multiple ultrasonic sensors and I have some code that also shows how to do that. Right now I'm just showing using one. In the setup function we we set up the serial monitor and then in the loop function, this is what the code looks like. Uh, it's again, I, I'm recording the amount of time it takes to make a single measurement. And this line of code right here is for detecting, uh, making a measurement with the ultrasonic sensor. So as you can see, it's much cleaner than the other code over here, which required a few more lines for making a measurement. Okay, so let's upload this to the Arduino. And we need to change the baud rate right here. Okay. So again, we're making a measurement of about 160 centimeters to the ceiling. 
and the amount of time it's taking to make this measurement is about 10 milliseconds. Now if I move my hand closer to the sensor, uh, we're making a measurement of about 13 centimeters or so. Again, for I, I still find these measurements to be pretty noisy. The big thing that's fixed by this new ping library is that uh, when there's there's no no ridiculously long lag times in the measurements. Uh, that's the the benefit to using it. I haven't I haven't done anything quantitative to compare which which library is noisier uh, or, or which uh, sorry which uh, code results in a a cleaner measurement. Uh, also, another thing that I've realized is that instead of getting these long lag times, uh, there are measurements of zero centimeters that, that pops up uh, pretty often when it's a, a timeout issue. Uh, so right now, I've directed the ultrasonic sensor in a similar way that I did before, and it's just reading zero centimeters, but we're not getting that ridiculous lag time. So one time, one way to deal with this is to just adjust your code so that if you get a, a reading of zero centimeters, just scrap it and say that you know we don't have a good measurement with the with the sensor. Still, the lag, uh, the time does change uh, depending on how far the object is away from the sensor. So right now, my hand's about ten centimeters from the object, and the measurement takes about one millisecond, and then. Yeah, when you back off, it's up to 10 milliseconds. I wanted to show a device that used a lot of ultrasonic sensors. Shown here is the laser sheet generator that I created a few months ago. It's got 12 ultrasonic sensors that are positioned around the perimeter of the device. These ultrasonic sensors are used to control two lasers or two servos that are connected to this plank that rotates uh, with the motor. So depending on the input, the angle of the laser beam changes and a different type of light sheet is created. For a, few, a full description of this device, I have a link of the instructable I created in the description of this video. Right now, clearly the motor's not spinning, I'm just reading out the output of these 12 ultrasonic sensors. And that's what's being displayed right here. Right now, there are no objects that are very close to the ultrasonic sensors. I just have the ceiling and there's a light above the device. However, if you look at the readings, there's a lot of variance in, in the output. should show you guys the code right now. Oh, this, is this the one? Nope, this is the wrong one. Where is it? Here it is. So it's using the new ping library and we're reading in these 12 devices. The distance is being stored in an array. And this is how you write the code for setting up multiple ultrasonic sensors with the new ping library right here. I'm using a, an Arduino Mega because I needed a lot of pins for these ultrasonic sensors. We set up the serial monitor, and now we're just collecting, making a measurement with the ultrasonic, each ultrasonic sensor, and displaying the value right here. So actually, I'm not storing the values in an array. And I have some delay between the measurements, and then a long delay at the end of the loop, and this repeats over and over again. So that's what we're seeing right here. And the way the code is set up right now, I'm still getting these very noisy measurements. Now, I've got a piece of tape to indicate which sensor is sensor number zero. And I'm going to just move my hand in front of it right here and see if we get any change in the measurement. So it looks like I'm about 14 or 15 centimeters away from the device. And still with my hand in front of of the sensor, you see that I'm sometimes getting a measurement of zero. So even with an object close, it's still pretty noisy. And that's one of the frustrating parts of using these ultrasonic sensors. You've got to come up with a way in the code to deal with this kind of, to deal with the, the noisy measurements. 
or turn to another sort of sensor. What you can do is you can take multiple measurements and average to get a more accurate reading of the distance an object is from the sensor. However, that's going to take time, so if you've got a lot of sensors and you want your device to go quick, then that may not be a good, a, a good solution. You also need to figure out how to store the values in an array, and it can be kind of a pain.